I'm very pleased to be here to be here tonight and to be and to be speaking here because I think that um, what we are now facing is cuts on the scale that none of us has ever seen before and that we are facing an attack on the whole of our welfare state and this is a welfare state which for those of us like myself who were born in the years after the Second World War was something that we thought would always be with us and we've seen for many years now, for more than uh, 30 years, we've seen attempts to cut away at that welfare state but it seems to me that what the coalition government is now talking about is something much more severe even than that, that the welfare state will become something if they get their way, which is simply as a safety net for the very poorest people in society, um, which, will be, which will fail even at that level, but which will not be available to anybody who is slightly above that level. And they, will, and they already are attacking hospitals, education, libraries, housing, all sorts of different areas we're now finding are um, under attack. And when you look at who is going to be hit hardest by, this, uh, by these cuts, although they say all the time, oh, we don't want welfare for the people who can afford it, we don't want free bus passes for pensioners who have big pensions and all this kind of thing, as if this is really the problem with the, uh, with the welfare state. If you look at who is going to be affected by these cuts, it will be the women, it will be the poorest people, it will be the ethnic minorities, it will be the people already on the lowest wages, in the worst conditions, who will be the people who are affected, both in terms of jobs, because many of these people work inside the public sector and therefore will find these jobs going or will find full-time jobs turned into part-time jobs and all the other things that are happening. But of course also they will be most affected by the cuts in services, by the cuts in welfare, by the cuts in benefits, by all of these things. I got a Facebook message today from a young man who said he's on benefits and he said they've now changed his signing on day and have miraculously lost one day out of 14 where he would have got the money. Um, and when he asked them where this money had gone, I mean, it doesn't amount to very much, it's about six or seven pounds, but when you're on benefits, as anybody who's been on that knows, this is a huge amount of money, the difference between be being able to afford to eat or not, this is a huge thing. And as he says in the Facebook, okay, that's just me, but when you add up everybody who's on benefits, if they all lose this day, this is millions of pounds that the government will, uh, the government will have and that people will lose. These are the kind of things that are going on and I think we have to raise a whole number of ideological arguments here. You see the Tories and the Lib Dems have started off by saying we have to make these cuts, we have no alternative. Every, you know, if you read all the papers there have to be some cuts so it all becomes juggling between whether you want this cut or that cut or all these things. I think we should start from a different premise which is why do we need to make these cuts at all. We live in a world which is much, much wealthier than it was when the welfare state was introduced after the Second World War. We live in a world where there is much, much more resources for people. There should be enough money to feed everybody, to house everybody, to give everybody a decent living standard, and yet this is what is being denied. And at the same time, they are talking about renewing the Trident... Uh, nuclear submarine system, which will cost in total £75 billion. <coughs> they are talking about continuing the war in Afghanistan and Iraq at the cost, yeah, they say there's a withdrawal from Iraq, but 50,000 American troops still there doesn't look like withdrawal in my book. Um, and they're escalating the war in Afghanistan. All of these things are there and huge amounts of money are being spent on them. Two new Aircraft carriers will cost £25 million between them. That's just one tiny thing. And so you have to say to yourself, this isn't about them looking around as to where the cuts can be made and where best they can ma be made and everybody's in it together and we all have to share the cost of the cuts. This is about something else. They are really saying their system is in crisis and are we going to have welfare for the bankers or are we going to have welfare for us? This is a choice that people are now facing. And the answer that comes from this government, and it isn't just this government, the Greek government, the German government, the Irish government, all of these governments, the answer is always the same. That 
When it comes to saving the bankers, they have limitless money. When it comes to waging war, they have limitless money. When it comes to helping the poorest and the most defenceless in society, they have no money. Now, that is an argument which I think we have to, uh, we have to reject. And this isn't about whether the money is there. The money is there. It is a question of whether it is spent in a particular way or whether it is spent in a different way. And I think, therefore, we need to build this coalition. I think it's extremely important that we do. And it is also important because there is a political deficit in this country. We now have... People, many, many people who voted Lib Dem, thinking in some ways it was a kind of left-wing alternative to Labour, that it was anti-war or it was more, it was better on civil liberties and all these kind of questions. This is a coalition government where the Lib Dems have accepted absolutely everything that the Tories have on offer. And we have a Tory government which is rabidly pro-market, pro-capital, and isn't interested, as we know, with, as with all previous Tory governments, but even more so, isn't interested in the fate of working-class people. But we also have no real response from Labour. I mean, I think it's quite incredible that Tony Blair is able to write in his book, which I hope you will all follow Andrew's advice and go and put it in the crime section, but he is able to write in his book that the Tory Lib Dem coalition are absolutely right about what they're doing with the cuts. And there isn't an outcry in the Labour Party about this. And what an incredible thing that this man is still allowed to be a member of the Labour Party. And I suppose you can't be too fussy when you've got Peter Mandelson in it. But it is quite an incredible thing that this is allowed to happen. And I must say, I have very little hope that the outcome of the leadership election for Labour will lead to any kind of serious opposition to what is going on from the Labour leadership. This will have to come from people from below. It will have to come from many Labour Party members and many non-Labour Party members, from people in trade unions. It will have to come from people in community organisations, from students, from school students. We are the people who have to organise now in order to stop these cuts happening. And this is what the idea behind the Coalition of Resistance really was when we... Um, when we uh, decided to set it up. And I don't want to repeat what the other speakers have said. This isn't an attempt to set up a campaign in opposition to any other. There are many, many cuts campaigns. There are many other campaigns around all the issues that we're talking about. And it's a question of trying to coordinate and trying to bring together people in every locality about, about how we fight over the cuts. We have a conference on November the 27th, which I think is incredibly important, not because conferences on their own change anything, but because it's a chance to bring together hundreds of people from across the country who represent all sorts of different interests and different campaigns and different organisations, and to say we are going to unite in order to fight over the cuts. And that will, has to be a grassroots campaign. It has to be, because it will not be built from people in councils. It will be not be built from the MPs. It won't be built from that level. It has to be built from people organising in that way. But, of course, that conference, it's very important we do get union backing for it. It's very important that everybody here who's in an organisation, that you commit that organisation, if you can, to supporting it and to uh, coming along to the conference. But also, that is, what, two and a half months away. What are we going to do between now and then? And it seems to me the success of the conference has to depend on what we do. And, you know, I was thinking back to what we did in 2003 when the Iraq war happened. Actually, we built a mass movement of school students who walked out of school two or three times, and hundreds of thousands of them walked out of school in total, even though they were locked in, they climbed over fences, they did all that kind of thing. Actually, lots of people walked out of work or stopped work at lunchtime and held meetings and took different kind of action in order to protest. Other people went out onto the streets and blocked the motorway in the middle of Leeds, uh, the motorway in the middle of Bristol, all these different kind of things. These are the kind of things we've got to think about doing. We really have to say we have to create a wave of opposition to these cuts, which is prepared to go on the streets, which is prepared to campaign, which is prepared to say we are not going to put up with a single one 
of these Tory Lib Dem cuts. We are not going to accept it. People have suffered enough in this country with inequality and all the other things that uh, people are suffering from, and we are going to organise to resist it now. That is what the coalition is about, and I hope very much that people will support it.